Hi, for this recording, I'm going to show you how to use Rowley's theorem to prove that 2x power 3 plus 3x squared plus 6x plus 1 has only exactly one root. That is, the equation 2x cubed plus 3x squared plus 3x plus 1 equal to 0 has only one root. The, the strategy I'm going to do is following two steps. First, I'm going to show that 2x cubed plus 3x squared plus 6x plus 1 has at least one root, at least one zero. Now the result I'm going to use is called the intermediate value theorem. After that, then I'm going to show that if px has two zero, the first step I show that it has there's at least one zero. Then I'm going to show that if px has two zero then it will contradict Rowley's theorem. Okay, so before I do that, let's try to understand what is the statement of intermediate value theorem and how do we apply this. So let's look at the PowerPoint slide of intermediate value theorem and how do we apply this. So in this case, the intermediate value theorem, you can find them in the David Brennan text, page 141, it says that if f is a continuous function on a closed interval from a to b, and k be any number lying between f of a and f of b, then there is a number c in the open interval from a to b, such that f of c equal to k. In particular, if f is continuous function on a closed interval from a to b, and suppose f and f of a less than 0 and less than f of b, that means f of a, f of b have opposite sign, then there is a number c such that on the open interval from a to b, f of c is equal to 0. How do you apply this? So let's try, you need to pick some point a and b first. So let's try an error. So I'm going to pick some point a and b. So our, our function is a polynomial, first of all, px equal to 2x cubed plus 3x squared plus 6x plus 1 is a polynomial, so it is continuous. So you can apply the intermediate value theorem. p of minus 1, you find that this is equal to minus 4. After calculation, p of minus 1 is equal to minus 4 less than 0. And p of 0, substitution, gives you a 1 greater than 0. Now, if you try to look at the graph, then you see this picture here. The polynomial has x equal to 0, y equal to 1. You'll find that that x equal to 0, y equal to 1. When x equal to minus 1, y equal to minus 4. And the uh, polynomial is continuous, so when you join them, you'll find that there is a point C somewhere in between. Right? There's a point C somewhere between minus 1 and 0, so that f of C, p of C is equal to 0. This is actually guaranteed by the intermediate value theorem. So, by the intermediate value theorem, as p of minus 1 is less than 0, less than p to 0, so there is a c in the open interval from 0 to 1, such that p of c equals 0. That means that 2x cubed plus 3x squared plus 6x plus 1 has at least one 0, at least one root now. Now, after knowing that there is one root, now we're going to apply the Lorry's theorem. So what does the Lorry's theorem say? Let's look at the statement of Lorry's theorem, which is on page 230 of David Brennan's text. Say that if a function is continuous on a closed interval from A to B, and differentiable on the open interval from A to B, and f of A is equal to f of B, then you must be finding a c between A and B, so that f of prime of c equals 0. It means, that if, if we have a function a and b have the same value, the f a and f b have the same value, then you must be able to find a c somewhere between a and b, such that f prime of c equals 0. That means that the tangent line is horizontal. Alright? When you have f of a equals f b. Now, in our case, what we're going to do now, suppose px has 2 0. Let's say p of c1, p of c2 equals 0. Assume that c1 is less than c2. OK? 
Okay, so what we can do is assume that P has two zero. Then according to Lorry's theorem now, because because P of C1 and P of C2 equal, so there is a point C. Right? In between C1 and C2, since C1 is less than C2, now there's a point C here, such as F prime C equals zero. Well, what is F prime C now? We know Px is 2x cubed plus 2x squared plus 6x plus 1. So P prime x is 6x squared plus 6x plus 6. So P prime C will be 6 c squared by 6c by 6 now equal to 0 what means that c squared by c plus 1 equal to 0. But if you solve this equation you know that this equation has no solution, no real solution. By applying the formula, the familiar formula you know that there is no solution now. So therefore p prime c equal to 0 has never happened. right? So p prime c equal to 0 has no solution. And this will contradict the Lorry's theorem. Therefore, Px has only one zero. Okay, that concludes the proof. All right. So what we do is assume that there are two zero. Then, then we get p prime c equals zero. But then we have solved that p prime c actually have no solution. P prime c equals zero actually has no solution and lead to a contradiction. Okay. So that finish the proof and the recording.